Hey guys, here for another installment of Casket Conversations. Uh, I know, Jesus, it has been a while, but uh, I'm here for another yet slightly shorter episode, but here nonetheless. Uh, today's topics, uh, I want to talk about three uh, things that have been kind of uh, circulating around in one aspect or another. Uh, first uh, up, we got uh, the Resident Evil the Final Chapter trailer. Uh, we got the DC Movies controversy, which it seems like there's a lot of people with their opinions on the matter, and I figured, why the hell not? I'll throw my thoughts into the bucket as well. And lastly, we've got the new Pennywise photos from the IT remake. So, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get into it. Um, so, I'm here today, I don't have anybody else with me on the show, and uh, so this should go by pretty uh, pretty qu quickly, I think. Um, but first up, I really wanted to talk about the Resident Evil Final Chapter trailer. Um, you know, the Resident Evil movies are a guilty pleasure for me. You know, I recognize that they're A, nothing like the video games, and B, they're not even the greatest movies in the world, but they're so much fun. Uh, I just have a blast watching those movies. I absolutely... I'm a huge fan of Mia uh, Jov Jovovich, or however you say her last name. I always screw it up. Uh, but I love her. I love her in everything she does. She's incredible. Um, but, um, yeah, you know, uh, it seems like there's a bit of controversy on this uh, trailer as well, you know. A bunch of people didn't like the uh, first trailer that came out. And then... Um, we got wind of the international trailer and it seems like a lot of people preferred that better um why don't people like the first trailer or teaser for this movie well it's because they chop up one of the greatest songs in the world guns and roses is paradise city um you know it didn't bother me i'm just gonna come right out of the bat or right out say it it's didn't bother me i actually really liked it i really liked the guns and roses trailer um, you know, and the other day I went and saw Sausage Party, which I have the review up for that, if you're curious on to what I thought about it. Um, but that was one of the trailers they played before the movie, it was Resident Evil, and I gotta say, hearing the music in the theater, seeing it on the big screen, it adds to it. It's really cool. I think some of the things that we forget is most people don't go online and watch all the trailers. Most people's first experience with trailers are when they go see uh, a movie and I think if you saw this movie um, for the first time on the big screen before seeing another film you wouldn't have as much of an issue with it with that being said I do think that there are some issues with it I liked what they were going for I liked you know um, them using Paradise City as sort of the backdrop or the song for this trailer and I liked the scenes that were cut together it definitely got me interested as to seeing what happened between Retribution and this one you know because I really enjoyed Retrib Retribution in the theater um but um yeah you know I mean yeah you know the editing could have been a little bit better uh they could have used uh different parts of the song maybe or different parts of the movie uh, but overall, you know, um, it didn't bother me. I got, you know, it just, it really didn't, um, I saw what they were going for and, uh, it was that fast paced music video like thing. And, um, I enjoyed it, you know? Um, yeah. So that's really all I got to say on that. Let me know what you thought of the trailer down below. And I do, and I will say, if you haven't seen the international trailer for the movie, go look it up because it is a really good trailer for the movie. All right, now on to the next topic. Uh, we got the DC movies controversy. Um, so this is where it's going to get a little bit longer in length because I have a lot that I want to say about this subject. Um, right off the bat, I'm going to say this. Batman is my favorite superhero. If I had to choose one superhero, Batman would be the guy. However, overall, I'm not really a DC guy. If I had to choose between a franchise, I definitely choose Marvel over DC. 
um, which is strange, but uh, that's kind of where I'm at um, as far as like the comic book sides of things or just the characters in general, uh, whether or not you factor in the movies or not. So, you know, I don't know that much about the DC characters as well as I do the Marvel characters. Um, and even that, I don't read comics that often uh, just because I don't honestly have the funds to go spend on comics regularly. So, you know, what I know the superheroes from are mainly the animated shows from when I was a kid and things like that in the movies. And um, so I wanted to say that up front before we get too much into it because that is the lens that I'm going to be looking through when talking about this subject. Um, I own Man of Steel. I have not been able to go out and get BVS on Blu-ray yet, which I do really want to get the Ultimate Edition because I did get to see it, and I posted my review for that online, as well as the theatrical version, uh, which you can find. Um, and I thoroughly enjoyed the Ultimate Edition. I mean, it's just... I'm not going to say it's night and day, but it's a huge difference from the theatrical version. Um, and I even walked out of the theatrical version really enjoying BVS, even recognizing the editing flaws in the movie um, and a few story issues, uh, which some of those story issues are fixed in um, the Ultimate Edition. Um DC is really doing everything different than Marvel, you know, and it's interesting uh, because, you know, they want a name for their self, you know, I mean, especially when you have a product that is so similar to another product, you have to market it right and you have to find that niche and that thing that people are going to be drawn to and um, something that I'm not even going to say Disney because Disney didn't own the Marvel movies from the very beginning, but something that um, I'll just say Paramount um, or Columbia, or whoever it was that owned the first Iron Man movie, when that first movie came out, they had no idea what was going to happen. You know, it could have very well been just as much of a bomb as it was a success. Um, and then they kept turning out movie after movie, you know. We got Iron Man, and then we got The Incredible Hulk, and then we got Captain America, and then Thor, and then we got The Avengers. And here's the... Th or we got Iron Man 2 as well. I forgot to mention that one. Uh, we got Iron Man 2 after Hulk, I believe it was. Um, but, you know, like... Here's here's the thing. Is... DC at this time... You know, people say that DC wasn't trying to create their own universe back then. But I believe they were. Um, and it was supposed to start with that Green Lantern movie with Ryan Reynolds. Um, I think that was their first test movie to see if the audience was, you know, really wanting something like that. And uh, we all saw what happened with that. Um, while the Green Lantern movie may be something fun to watch on a Saturday morning or something, uh, it's not the greatest movie in the world. Um, so, you know, I do believe that DC tried and they failed. And, you know, um, it was what it was. And then, you know, Nolan's Batman gets over, you know, I mean, the Dark Knight Rises comes out and then, you know, the DC movies are back to kind of, uh, being sort of non, you know, non-existent. And I think with all of the Marvel movies that have come out since then, um, which has been a lot, um, I think DC is just realized, you know what, well, let's go for it. Let's just go for the game. And something they've decided to do is, um, you know, go backwards with it. You know, um, my opinions on the matter is I don't, I, I'm not of the, the ideology that that's a wrong way to go with it. Um, you know, they started with man of steel. That was the, the, that was the first one for them. And I've always said this, and I don't have my Man of Steel review up. I need to make it um, because I've had a lot of people curious as to what I thought about uh, that film. But I am not a Superman fan. 
You know, that's another thing I'll say going out of the gate. I'm, I don't like Superman. But Man of Steel made me like Superman. You know, like, before Man of Steel came out, there w- you would have never gotten me to watch any of the old Superman movies or the Superman cartoon or anything like that. Because the character, I think, is... Uh, I see him more as... I don't see him as a superhero, you know? It's kind of weird and because because he's an alien. And so it's hard for me because he's an alien that is marketed as a superhero. And I will, it's hard for me to see him as anything more than just an alien. You know, it's like, he's not, an, he's not a superhero. He's just, he's, he's an alien. Um, and you know, he's really godlike and it's like really super hard to take him out. You know, the reason I like superheroes is because they're flawed because there's, ways some a lot of ways to take them out but they always end up rising above um and you take that away and they're just gods with powers and that's why for me superman doesn't work and you know and superman was really special for when the character came out and was created and everything but in this day and age i just think he's just like an old He's just an old fart, you know, it just, it doesn't work. So I was excited for Man of Steel when it was coming out just because Nolan's name was attached to it. Uh, and I am a Snyder fan, don't get me wrong, but, uh, but I'm a Nolanite through and through. I'm a absolute Christopher Nolan fanboy and seeing his name attached to it in any respect made me go, okay, you know, well, let's see. And I unfortunately didn't get to see it in theaters, but I did buy the Blu-ray um, after it came out. And it's a great movie. Man of Steel made me like Superman again. So, um, here's my thing. Firstly, let's talk about Batman v Superman. We'll talk about them in order, I suppose. And I said this in my reviews, but uh, to save you from going, in case you don't really want to sit through whole reviews, this is my through and through thought on the matter, uh, considering the whole thing. Um, the problem with the theatrical version of BVS is I didn't get, I didn't win, like, spoiler, if you haven't seen BVS, spoiler, but when, when Superman dies... I didn't cry. I didn't feel anything. Even during the funeral scenes, I didn't feel anything. I didn't care. I could have cared less, actually. Or I couldn't care less. Um, because it, just, it wasn't done right, you know? Um, but I kid you not, I was sitting, watching the movie on my laptop, and I was literally sitting there with the Ultimate Edition like bawling my eyes out over this character that previously I didn't care f- I didn't care about and for me that was the winning factor and look and we can argue all day or not whether Zack Snyder should have planned for a 3 hour movie or not but that th- 3 hour movie works I'm not saying it doesn't have a few flaws here and there but it works theatrical version doesn't and this is again someone who doesn't like superman and this movie shows you so much more about the character it really gets you invested in superman and everything and a lot of the controversy goes from because again and there's been a lot of people on youtube that have talked about this and i'm gonna again add my name to this list before the movie came out When there was a bunch of critics that went and saw the movie and got to see it. And all these good things were coming out. Or these fan screenings too, I think there were. The movie they saw was the three hour version. Why they nearly basically at the last minute decided to cut the movie down. I don't know. And that shot them them in the foot. That completely hurt them in the long run. So then we get Suicide Squad. And, you know, 
again, they hire on a director like David Ayer, which is a really good director. Um, they watch his version. It's more dark than they want it to be. So they go and do all these research and they switch it up and they change it. And look, I don't know how different David Ayer's version is from the theatrical, but I got to believe it's better than what we got in the theatrical version. I gave Suicide Squad a 7 out of 10. It's it's passing, but barely, in my opinion. You know, the things that really made me love the movie were Margot Robbie, Jared Leto, and um, and Deadshot and Will Smith. Um, everything else about the movie. Oh, and I I did like um, Amanda Waller, uh, sticking a uh, Viola Davis. I almost forgot her name. So those four. That's it. The rest of the movie, honestly, you could have changed the whole thing and it, it, it would have played out better. You know? There's so much in this movie. And, and, and knowing that there are scenes with the Joker that's on the editing room, editing room floor that we didn't get to see really makes me upset. And um, I'm really curious as to what was there. Um... I mean, the thing that made Suicide Squad more of a win than a loss for me was I came out really enjoying myself, you know, um, because the characters are a lot of fun. And this isn't a, and, and look, this is not a diss on any of the actors or actresses in this movie because it wasn't their fault at all. Um, like, at all because all of them were superbly well cast as these characters the problem was the story it didn't play well the you know even um you know enchantress uh what's her face um she was cast great as the character but they fucked her over and that's just there's there's no other way to say it they did they fucked her over not good not good at all not only that is the the third act of this movie is the same third act that I've seen in at least two other movies that have come out this year alone. So when you have all these things together, I think what it's going to take for people to start getting more on the side with Warner Brothers and what they're trying to do with the DC movies is to take their fingers out of the pie. And look, I don't anybody with a brain will understand the idea of you're investing into this movie it's your money you want to make sure that it's going to be successful and frankly there are going to be some things that maybe you don't want in the movie but there's a big difference between that and just completely abolishing the vision of the director and you know i think air is being really classy without saying anything overtly horrible or mean or bad about Warner Brothers because that's just good business you know you're not supposed to do that but at the same time I want to see his version of the movie I'm really curious if they release tomorrow the David Ayer version of Suicide Squad I would go see it you know um because I really know I really want to know what the difference was so anyways that's my take on the matter um by far Man of Steel, I think, still is, has been the best movie out of the three to come out. Um, I'm really excited for Justice League, and I think Wonder Woman will be the next best movie. Um, I don't think Justice League has a chance of being better than Wonder Woman at this point. Um, not if they're pulling a lot of the same shit that they have with the last two movies. They need to just go in and make the movie... I let us fans be the determining factor of whether it's good or not. And that's what I think. All right. So on to the last topic. Uh, Pennywise photos. Um, so, look. This isn't going to, uh, to be very long. Clowns scare me. And I'm not even talking about scary clowns. I'm talking about clowns. I don't like clowns. Um, 
I think maybe Ronald McDonald is maybe the only clown that maybe doesn't scare me. Um, but even under the certain light, he would scare me. But he's the only one that has a chance. Um, I don't like clowns. I don't like clowns. A lot of that has to do with the original TV movie of Stephen King's It with Tim Curry as It. Freaking scared the living shit out of me. And I've never liked clowns since. Um, I've always said this and I'll say this again. I have mad respect for Stephen King just as far as his books go because he's the only person that with words scared the living crap out of me. I was reading one of his books and um, I forget the name of the actual story, but it scared the living, it scared the living peewot out of me. And I was in middle school at the time and I remember getting to the end of the story and I was like, uh, uh, and I closed the book and I literally, I threw it across the room. I was like, nope, done. <laughs> Mad respect, bro. I'm not going to sleep tonight. Um, so I love his stories and even his less like straight horror stories, you know, but like Stand By Me or Shawshank Redemption, he's just such a good author. And I think it's about time that it gets a theatrical version made. I think it's got a lot of potential to be really good, firstly, but also really creepy. So these photos come out and they're good. They're good. I buy, I buy these photos. I mean, I, th they, they, they scare me. They're creepy. Um, I can only look at them at them so long before going, Bleh, you know. So I'm, I'm really excited. I'm, I, re I really am. You know, there's really not much more I can say, other than that. You know, I'm sort of a newbie when it comes to horror movies. Um, I've been trying to go back and watch a lot of the classics and. Um, you know, I just watched um, Hellraiser for the first time not that long ago and really, really enjoyed that one. Um, and I watched, I f found uh, Phantasm and I watched that and that was really good. Um, so, you know, uh, yeah, you know, I, I, I will be really excited to see what this movie will be like and whether it's actually any good or not. Because I think Skarsgård has the best chance of doing this role very 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 well so anyway that's my take again a little bit of a shorter episode but um that's all i got for this go round i hope you enjoyed it please if you liked it drop it a like um subscribe if you enjoy the content there's a lot more here i do movie reviews and tv show reviews um uh, a lot of things i just finished uh, season two of Penny Dreadful so I will be making uh, a video for that soon um, as well as uh, some other stuff coming um, and let me know uh, what you guys think down in the comments on whether or not you want me to go back through uh, the first um, season of Game of Thrones episode by episode because I was thinking about going back through the show um, the end of this year and um, I'm curious as to whether or not you guys would want me to do reviews for that. Um, so let me know. Hope you guys enjoyed it. You guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram. And I'll see you in the next episode. See you later, guys. Bye.